On the edge of real and cyberspace, there's one place you can go, and you found it. Welcome to KWTV, the one and only screencast that tunes tech into your way of life and lets that technology work for you. My name's Matt Wise, and for the coming 30 minutes or so, I'll be your host on this episode of KWTV, where we review another mobile phone by HTC, the HTC Cha-Cha. Hey guys and girls, welcome back to KWTV, another episode, and this time in our uh, very own, well, <clears throat> can we call it the Batcave? No, we can't call it the Batcave. We don't have to call it the laundry room anymore, because as you know, uh, some of the people who were, at the, uh, were uh, watching the KWTV live series know that there was a washing machine in the uh, office here, but we moved that about and we got some more space, hence all of the screens and all of the... Uh, computers making quite a bit of uh, heat here in uh, Belgium. It's starting to get really sunny and really summery uh, and uh, having that many screens on is kind of um, making the temperatures go all up and we need a t-shirt. So, welcome to KWTV. Today we are going to dive into the world of mobile phones again and we are going to review one of the latest models of HTC, the HTC Cha-Cha. This Android telephone that features both a touchscreen and an on-screen keyboard, or a physical keyboard, is uh, uh, HTC's newest adventure into the um, world of Android smartphones. We're going to take a good look at it and I must say I really like it. I think we need to call a surgeon to physically separate me from this device. After two weeks of testing, I am uh, quite uh, attracted or quite fond of this little device. I have normally my HTC Desire Z, which I use, and I had switched over just for the purposes of uh, you know this review to this machine for two weeks, and I'm probably not going to let it go. We are going to talk about the HTC Desire in full detail. What it does, what it doesn't do, what's good, what's bad, what's ugly, what's nice, and why. Oh, why is it called the Cha-Cha? We don't know if we can find an answer to all of those questions, but we sure as hell will try. But before we get into that, we are going to delve through a box of crap. The internet is a wonderful place. I absolutely love my interwebs. And what I love most is getting to know people all over the world. And sometimes that leads to very strange encounters. Uh, I've met the guys uh, online from the Geek Tragedy podcast, which is a very, very good sci-fi podcast about uh, sci-fi TV shows in the States. And we have been following each other and talking to each other on Twitter. So uh, when I got a message a few weeks ago... Or a week ago, I think, uh, about uh, from from the guys from the uh, Geek Tragedy podcast. Hey, Nightwise, we are cleaning out our attic or our garage. Would you like us to send you a box of crap? Box of crap. Of course, of course, I would like to receive your box of crap. But I thought they were kidding. Apparently, these guys do not kid around. Uh, they sent me this box of crap by Courier, and I wanted to uh, open it up on the show and show you what's inside. And just, you know, the wonderful world of the internet, see what you get from people all over the world, just, you know, for fun. They uh, got me a little uh, note here. They said, uh, hope you like this stuff. The Lynx is WET11, this baby, is uh, very hackable. In fact, I've already upgraded it by replacing its wireless card with a SendNL... 25 2 SED card. It's only B, but it's super long range. Anyhow, hope you can use this garage sale stuff. Well, thank you, guys. I wanted to get the, get through the box with you because it's really funny to have, a, you know, just get this in your mailbox. Now, this is that um, 2.4 gigahertz to B wireless Ethernet bridge by Linksys. It looks 
pretty cool and uh, you can uh, hack these things like you wouldn't believe. They're just like the uh, WRT uh, routers, they have open firmware and you can replace cards. Not fast, super long range, has a mega big antenna, pretty hefty and you just uh, connect the good old ethernet cable in here. So that was in there. It was very interesting. <laughs> then there was this. It took me a while to realize what this is. And I, uh, it, it is very dirty. I, I, you could have washed it, guys, but the fun is, he, they didn't only send me this Walkman, or whatever it is, they also sent me a complete bucket load of germs completely alien to the European continent. I am going to get diseases and flus and colds off of this that I would have never had in uh, Europe. So that's kind of a new experience to me. Now what it is, it took me a while cause, uh, to figure it out because the buttons are gone, but this is a Walkman. It, uh, it, it isn't powered, but you can actually, um, you know, switch radio channels with this. This is a transistor radio. I love this. I. I think this is bizarre. This takes me, this would be the equivalent of lugging around the gramophone player when I would go jogging because, you know, we're all so used to MP3s and God knows what and iPods and, and, and using your smartphone that a good old Walkman that does a radio uh, reception or a radio signal, it is kind of alien and uh, it is kind of nice. And it's also very, very dirty. It's our mystery object of the day. Guess the function and the number of diseases it carries. Um, what else? Oh, always nice. A uh, mini USB charger for the car. Car adapter to mini USB. Has a nice Motorola logo. I unfortunately have nothing that has a mini USB uh, connector anymore, but I will cherish this. <coughs> then a Logitech headset with a classic analog uh, jacks, which is cool. Uh, it doesn't come with um, um, foam on the ear uh, pieces, probably because they were full of germs as well. But we don't mind. This is nice. So it has this really exotic feel to it. And it's Logitech. And Logitech is mostly really good hardware. So thank you for that. Then we have, of course, the charger. Charger of that uh, Linksys thingy that I talked about. Now, this is an American charger, so I can't plug this in. In America, you have 110 volts coming out of your wall outlets. We have 220 volts. So if I put, I stick this in, oh no, it, it will work, but I just need another uh, connector thingy here. Uh, the adapter will actually take 220 volts. Now, funny story, I've seen people lug around some of those beige boxes like behind me, and they used to have a little switch at the power supply that would say 110 volt or 220 volt. Colleagues of mine took one of those boxes to the USA, put it on 110 volt, came back, forgot to switch the box, but box back to 220 volt, put it into the wall outlet, and then um, computer said bang, big bang, big bang. And then uh, this is actually the, the thing I, I really like. It's a travel adapter set. It comes with a charger with a firewire port, so this is old school iPod people, and uh, all kinds of uh, funky connectors. I'll just show you some. Um, let me see here. All kinds of all kinds of weird weird things. Like this one. This is the American one, I think. And this is the classic European one that we are using. So I really like this because when we go to the states, and we will, uh, I think next year or this year, I don't know. We're coming. Uh, we can use this. This is nice. Then um, we have two of those. Two of these. These are um, mini display port to uh, S video. So if you want to hook up an old TV, uh, CRT TV, to your um, or video recorder, if you still have that one, uh, to your Mac or your MacBook, you can use these. So these are nice. I don't have an analog TV anymore, but they're nice. <laughs> and then we have uh, some more cables. Oh yes. Oh yes. This is also nice. This is a, a, a Motorola uh, headset with a mini USB uh, connector. There you go. So I can put that on. These, ha these, these have foams. This is nice. And then we have our mystery object. And that's going to be our competition object for today. I will post a picture of this in high definition uh, in the show and the show notes because 
we want to know what this is. This is a kind of a Farallon Etherwave AAUI transceiver with a very strange plug. Can you see that? Okay. And it uh, is actually uh, quite massive. It is really sturdy. And it has two Ethernet ports. So I don't know what this hooks into or what it comes to. But I thought long and hard about it. This is the perfect murder weapon. I mean, you can literally club somebody to death with this and nobody will know what it is. Absolutely no one will know. So, the perfect murder weapon uh, here on KWTV and our questionnaire of this week, what is this device? What does it do? If you can find out, uh, send us an email and uh, you might win our own box of crap. But we're going to do that. Okay, somebody, uh, somebody who figures out what this is will get one of this box, this box, filled with crap from my basement and I ship it to you and you can do a competition and you ship it to somebody else and that way, that way um, stuff like this travels all over the world and germs do too so that's interesting so very very nice we are going to go on with the show I want to thank the guys from the GTK podcast for this great box of crap this absolutely was not necessary and I do appreciate it I mean there's stuff in there that was really nice I mean the wireless range extender and stuff like that really cool stuff I will be having a lot of fun. I might ship my own box of crap back. I'll need to collect some germs first, but I will. So enough of the box of crap, which is infinitesimally more interesting than the stuff that we are actually going to talk about. We're still going to talk about it. We're going to review the HTC Cha Cha. I hope you enjoyed the guys uh, from the Geek Tragedies podcast. There's nothing more in there? Oh, oh. Only kidding. Only kidding. Uh, thank you for your box of crap. Oh, God, I've kind of thrown these things all over the place. Uh, we're going to move on to review the HTC Cha-Cha. Enjoy. The HTC Cha-Cha is not HTC's first attempt at a keyboard and screen phone. They did this with the HTC Mabel once before, but those were Windows mobile phones. This is actually their first attempt at an Android phone that features both a physical keyboard and a touchscreen. If we take a look at the specs, it's an 800 megahertz processor with 512 megabytes RAM and 512 megabytes ROM. It has a... Um, let me just see here, a 2.6 inch touchscreen, which is a 5 by 4 ratio display, comes with an internal GPS, it's a HSPDA, sorry, uh, we, WCDMA, of course, uh, it's a tri-band, uh, GSM, GPRS, and Edge, has Bluetooth 3.0, Wi-Fi, a uh, audio jack, a micro USB connector, a 5 megapixel camera, and a front-facing VGI uh, camera, which has a lower resolution. It comes with a built-in um, SD card slot for memory X expansion and it is actually quite a nice phone if you take a look at the price point at about 300 euros full color screen of course touch screen the ratios as i said kind of nice to work with and then you of course have the big physical keyboard and what is very special here the facebook button we'll do a little bit of an unboxing take a look at the phone in detail to see what's in the box. Of course, there is the HCC phone, as you can see. It's, of course, uh, the well-known HCC aluminum unibody design, where you can see that the entire gray piece of the phone is uh, uh, very sturdy aluminum. And what is very funny, you'll see it when, uh, when I hold the phone like that, the phone isn't completely straight. It actually has a little bit of a bend in here. And that fits very well in your hand, especially when you need to hold it like this and type like that which gives a very comfortable um, position when you have to uh, single-handedly type on the device. Uh, if we take a good look at the at the main uh, layout of the phone there is of course there are four touch buttons here two physical buttons here then you have the physical keyboard the Facebook button you have the micro USB and the volume button and in the back you have the flash the camera and if you take a good look at the front here is the front facing camera so all in all a pretty well featured phone for 300 euros or something if you take a look at the box it's a basic standard HTC phone you know the booklets and then you of course have the HTC charger not gonna unwrap that you know how that look what that looks like 
a uh, micro USB to USB cable and then you have a headset uh, that comes with it. Uh,